Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, there, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, I am, um, I'm actually going to say for once, I agree with half of what a uh, evangelical minister had to say. I never thought I'd say this, but I do agree in part that the idea of a uh, of the government, uh, sorry, of the taxpayer not having to fund movies that are, um, you know, that are problematic or what have you, uh, or or offensive or hate crime or what have you, or 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 you know, like are really about bad subjects. However, there is a however on this. Define highly offensive, okay? And, uh, you know, even where they said, what counts as a dirty movie? George Strombopoulos had a very good point on here. Um, technically speaking, no, this is not a form of censorship. But, and this is the but, um, you know, there's, w with a vague term like that, it can mean literally anything a prime minister wants it to mean. And um, precedent, dangerous precedents could be set by this. Um, you know, I have to agree for the, for the most part with George Strombopoulos on this one that... Um, you know, uh, and I mean, they said that there's no consensus about religious institutions and stuff like that. The thing is, it's interesting that they apply to um, to consensus and the like on this one. Um, I think what George Strombopoulos was trying to do was argue by analogy on both of these. And um, for the most part, I think he was fairly good on this point. Like, you know, this is not, um, you know, I think I get, there were a couple of points early on where it looked like he was going to over, uh, where he was going to straw man attack the Christian minister, which I was going to have to correct it uh, on. But I think overall... I actually agree with uh, what he was saying. Um, I guess my concern is um, what defines offensive, and um, without a clear-cut list. I mean, like if we if we even had like a guideline list, like if if the censor board, if the censor board that's already in existence, um, you know, posted a list of criteria and then posted that to the heritage minister and said, listen, uh, you know, this is what we've worked on before. Here's the list of stuff that you need to know, uh, you know, of guidelines in order to be able to look at this sort of criteria, uh, you know, in terms of context. Um, you know, I, and I agree that uh, I agree with what uh, George was saying about it's like looking at one verse in the Bible and summing the whole thing up based on it. Um, to do um, uh, to do something like that is called what's is what's called quoting out of context. And for the Family Action Coalition to pull this, uh, you know, to to support this in that format is a critical thinking fallacy. Um, so yeah, overall, I would be concerned about this bill going through. Um, and I, but I'm more concerned about the fact that if it does go through, there's no system to help the, uh, you know, even if a committee of cro even if a cross section of Canadians does get appointed as a committee, the problem is, is that the bulk of these people don't have a definition to work by. I mean, if if there was a set of guidelines that even, uh, you know, that if there was a, a an actual set of guidelines or or of something, you know, if a committee could come up and uh, you know a separate committee before this whole thing even went through and and actually reviewed upon, you know, actually went, you know, people who, um, you know, who talked in art, you know, expertise in a whole bunch of areas came together and decided what counted as, you know, to give a, re a representation of the Canadian populace of what actually counts as um i mean like he said that it was pornogra like pornography that the, the majority of canadians wouldn't want supporting that how do we even know that i mean we don't have any polls on this senses since i have never actually um have never actually come forward on this i mean um you know if we had a cross-section of canadians go through to take a look at what counted as offensive and what should not be funded by taxpayers like if we had an actual cross you know come up with guidelines and then submit that uh before the c10 bill went through i'd be fine you know, because then we could actually take a look at, okay, this is something that's not appropriate by Canadian law, um, you know, or this is not appropriate uh, for the Canadian populace. And um, now, of course, if, if times changed, you know, um, and then we'd have to say, um, I mean, what about the terrorist legislation? Every five years, the terrorist legislation has to be reviewed and redebated. Uh, why not do something with this, this Bill C-10? Like, you know, make the subject to a five-year change so this way... Um, you know, we can we can a debate um, whether the guidelines that are already in place are necessary, or b whether this legislation is even necessary in five years' time. I mean, like you know, this is a. Um, I'm not going to say it's a deliberate attack by religious people uh, against the uh, against the uh, critically thinking uh, against the majority of the country, but what I would say is that it seems to be a little too vague and uh, vagary in anything. Uh, particularly, especially in politics, can cause a lot of problems. Um, so, in my case, I would um, I would say that this with this B still to, uh, Bill uh, Bill C10 slipping that in there to the point where people weren't aware of it, not a good idea. 
And um, from what I've heard, uh, not having any um, guidelines for it, also not a good idea. So any Canadians who are watching this video reply, um, if you'd like to make a reply, um, uh, you know, um, even just giving a guideline as to what you, uh, evangelical Christians, if you want to come talk to me about um, what actually deems um, offensive, this taps another issue for me, uh, and this is more of a personal issue owing to the fact that I have Asperger's syndrome, but um, because of the fact that I have a uh, disability which works on, so which um, prevents me from really learning too much about social issues, um, I've come to question um, a large chunk, again, from critical thinking standpoint and from the, you know, of, uh, effectively I look at the entire social situation, uh, social uh, context in North America from an outside perspective. So my question is, what actually defines morality? Uh, could I actually get a list of what actually defines morality if there are any exceptions to each of these rules? And um, more specifically, why each of these, uh, why, um, why, uh, why something is actually offensive? Like, um, say for example, if you say sex is offensive, or, or young people having sex is offensive, why is it offensive? That's my question. Like, what is wrong about sex, or or what is um, you, you see what I mean? Like a cross cultural group, um, you know, if it's a, if it's a committee appointed by the heritage minister rather than a co rather than a separate board, I mean, even our censor board is not even elected by the Canadian public, and I agree again about problems of censorship. Um, but you know, the, that that's another issue right there. But this this taps a much stronger issue for me of um. You know, we don't have any actual um, real definition as to what counts as offensive and what the general public counts as offensive. And if so, uh, why is that? I mean, like, um, like we, we use these broad terms, but the thing is that wouldn't a lot of these things come by on a case-by-case -case basis? Um, you know, isn't there a lot of, you know, uh, technical details that need to be worked out? Um, you know, there's not even a lot of definition on a lot of this stuff. Like, you know... Um, like, I'm not even half aware of some of the subtle nuances of our social system that... Um, you know that uh, that somebody could just arbitrarily say this is offensive, but without actually knowing. Um, you know, I mean, like here's the thing: the prime minister gets elected, uh, the prime minister and the party get elected. But remember, there's only five parties, and even within the party, personal, um, even within a party, the uh, there could be a subtle variation, a subtle difference um, between parties as to how. Um, you know, a subtle variation within members of parties as to what is viewed as moral and what some is not. I mean, some people might uh, view pornography as fine, um, but some people might view, um, you know, some people might, um, you know, there could be one extreme end of the spectrum to the point, uh, you know, where a couple of MPs might view pornography as fine, all the way to the other end where, um, where, uh, where there might be some reactionists who, uh, who would say that anything uh, about um, even mentioning the word sex or that, um, or that suggesting that anything happens between, uh, or suggesting that any programming that doesn't say that babies are brought about by storks uh, is immoral. Uh, I mean, like, you see what I mean? Like, there's an entire spectrum on here, um, or there's even a spectrum on a whole bunch of issues that doesn't really get culminated. So the individual prime minister's perspective may not even reflect that of the party overall. You see what I mean? Like, when he's, when he's, when he's uh, electing that, um, there's no real consensus to what morality is. It's all unspoken. And, um... I guess as an Aspie, um, I would like to see a lot more of this brought out in discussion, actually spoken about in terms of moral, moral context. So this way, then we'd actually be able to have some more better, uh, you know, some better defining features. So this way, should be Bill C-10 get passed, then we'd actually be able to have a, um, you know, then we'd actually be able to, um, how shall we say, uh, apply Bill C-10 appropriately if it ever gets through, or if not. Um, then we could even, you know, rework the censor board in a format that is appropriate, um, or question why things are, you know, are necessary the way they are, um, and this way we could then actually get a truer, uh, you know, and then by even talking about this, we might be able to get a truer impact, uh, a truer um, representation of what people actually think about morality, and then uh, rework the, um, you know, in terms of programming and the like, and then rework the censor board guidelines and the Bill C-10 guidelines to appropriately reflect this, and then have like a review board, and then have like a review time period where this has to happen every few years or so, say, corresponding to each election, um, where this gets brought up, and then the censor boards like redo this. Now, I'm not sure if this in part is already done, but um, it would be an idea to expand this a little bit further and to openly talk about this more in public, um, as particularly in relation to Bill C-10 and, um, and the censor board. Uh, you know, if only for the reasons so this way, at least we actually know what we're talking about. You know, so this way we've got a definition of terms. There's no way of weasel words or, or, or twisting of words, you know, the fallacies of equivocation and, uh, and amphiboly. Um, you know... Um, it might be able just to help us develop a better idea of what we actually should be um, 
restricting funding from and whatnot. Just to better apply the legislation.